Hello artists, this clay boot camp station is called joining hard slabs. Joining hard slabs is the technique that you use when you're making kind of geometric or architectural forms. If you wanted to make a box, a house, or a castle, this is the technique that you would probably use. To start out, you're going to roll your slabs using a rolling pin or we might use the slab roller in the classroom depending on how many we're rolling. You want your slab to be an even thickness and it should be about a quarter inch thick. Then you're going to cut your slab into evenly sized pieces. It's important that they're evenly sized because you want it to fit together in a way that makes sense. A good way to do this is to create a pattern out of a piece of paper. So decide what size your box or house or whatever you're building is going to be and then create a pattern for each of those sides. In this case, I'm just using the same size paper pattern for the sake of showing you how this works. Cut around your pattern using a needle tool or a clay knife, either one is fine. This clay boot camp is called joining hard slabs because the hardness or dryness of the slabs is important in order for your um, sculpture to hold its form. If you try and join soft slabs, it's going to collapse. You might join soft slabs to make cylinders, but not to make something geometric. So once you've cut your pieces, let them dry until they're leather hard. Score and slip the edges of your slabs to join those two pieces together and to create a corner. You can also think of scoring and slipping as wet and wiggle. So once you wet the scored piece of clay, you can wiggle it in place until you feel it grab onto the other piece of clay that you're attaching it to. Then roll a small coil and place it in the joint of the two pieces of clay. Blend the seams together using your fingers or a clay tool. Don't forget to score and slip to make sure that the attachment is really strong. If you were making a box or a house or whatever your form is, you would continue joining the hard slabs, making sure that all the sides fit together evenly and all of the seams are blended. Hello artists, this clay boot camp station is about rolling coils. When you work with wet clay, you want to think gentle and slow. Remember to go gently and slowly to get nice, even shaped coils that will be easy to build and sculpt with. Start out by gripping a piece of clay in two hands and slowly squeeze it to lengthen it into a longer shape. Then place your clay on a table and roll it towards you and away from you in short, light strokes. As the clay begins to lengthen, you can roll it with both hands, moving your hands from the center of the coil out towards the end, opening up your fingers and using both your fingers and your palms. Try to roll the coil all the way from your fingertips down to your wrists in order to get a nice, evenly shaped, round coil.
Your coil should be no thicker than your thumb and no thinner than your pinky. If your coil is drying out a lot as you roll it, you can try spraying the surface of your table with a bit of water to keep it moist as you're working. Hello artists! This clay boot camp is all about building with coils. Building with coils is an excellent way to make a form, whether it's round, square, or an organic shape of your choosing. Once you have several coils rolled out, you'll make a slab of clay about a quarter inch thick kind of like a pancake, by flattening a ball of clay with your palm. You can either keep it round or you can cut it into the shape that you'd like the base of your form to be. Notice how I'm using my fingers to massage the edges of the clay and the surface of the clay. If you see any cracks from the clay drying out, you can simply massage with your fingers and it will bring out the moisture that's already inside the clay. Score and slip around the edges of your base. Score and slip your first coil that you plan to attach. Stack the coil on the base and do a little wet and wiggle until you feel the clay start to grab onto the base. Don't forget to score the coil where it overlaps with each other. Then blend the coil seams into the base and on the inside and the outside of your coil. Try to, if you're blending the coil on the outside, try to support it with your fingers on the inside so that it doesn't collapse while you're working. Repeat this process. Score the coil that you've attached to the base and score the coil that you plan to attach on top of it. Then add slip, wet and wiggle. Blend the seams together on the inside and the outside, remembering to support the pot from the inside when you're blending the outside. Here you can see I have my fingers on the inside of the clay coil pot as I'm blending the outside so it doesn't collapse. Think gentle and slow when you are working with moist clay to make sure that all of your seams are blended and all of your clay is attached well. Hello artists, this clay boot camp is all about surface decoration. You can decorate a surface of your clay by pressing in texture stamps 
by carefully scratching away or carving a design, or by adding clay onto the surface. Start by rolling a slab that's about one quarter inch thick. If you know that you're going to use a lot of texture stamps, you might want to make it a little bit thicker because as you press the stamps in, your clay will get thinner. Before you begin, smooth the surface with your finger or a rubber rib so that it doesn't have the texture of the canvas already imprinted on it. In our class, we have a lot of homemade texture stamps that are made out of fired clay. Experiment with the different textures that they create. The surfaces that go in on the stamp will actually be raised. Some of the stamps are wheels that have different textures as you move around them. Another way to do surface decoration is by scratching or carving a design into your clay. I'm using a needle tool to scratch a design. This can feel like a really easy way to draw the picture that you want into your clay, but be careful because as you scratch, you'll find that you're removing little bits of clay that when they dry and are fired, get hard and sharp. So here I'm actually using a different tool to press around my design and make it stand out a bit more and be a bit softer. Any tool can be turned into a stamp by pressing it into your clay and creating a pattern. Another way to decorate the surface of your clay is by adding clay on. Here I'm rolling a coil to create a raised line. Don't forget that anytime you add clay onto a surface, you need to use score and slip or wet and wiggle to attach it. Hello artists, this clay boot camp is all about making a pinch pot. When you work with moist clay, think gentle and slow. Your goal when first learning to form a pot is to make the sides and bottom uniform and even, and you don't want them too thin. Remember, no thinner than your pinky, no thicker than your thumb. First, roll a ball of clay. Don't over roll or overwork the clay because it will begin drying and cracking out and it will make the clay more difficult to work with. Gently push your thumb or finger into the center of the ball of clay. Press way down to the bottom, but not through the bottom. Using your thumb and fingers, gently pinch to widen the pot. As you're working, your clay may get a little dry. Don't forget that you can simply massage the dry parts of the clay to bring out the natural moisture that's inside of it. Gently turn the clay and pinch, turn and pinch, turn and pinch. Try to keep even pressure as you pinch. Then flatten the bottom by gently pressing it against 
a flat surface like your table. Smooth out the rough spots, smooth out the dry spots. You can either use your fingers or you can uh, try using some tools. Apply a gentle amount of pressure to get the job done. Once you feel like you have a pretty even walled pinch pot, you can add details and decoration. Place your hand inside the pinch pot when you need to support it. If you're adding textures, put your fingers on the inside so that as you press a texture or a stamp into the outside, it doesn't crush the shape of your pinch pot. You don't want your pot to lose its shape. Remember all the ideas from the surface decoration station. You can press in texture stamps, you can carefully carve a design, you can even add clay onto the surface by using score and slip. Try using a variety of lines and shapes to make interesting patterns on your pinch pot. If you want to raise your pinch pot up off the ground, a simple way is by using three small balls of clay to make a tripod. Roll three of the same size clay balls. Then scratch and score both the bottom of the pinch pot and the bottom of the clay feet. Uh, wet and wiggle them and they'll make a wonderful base for your clay pinch pot. If you do decide to add feet to your pinch pot, make sure that your pinch pot is level by gently dropping it onto the surface of your table and gently pressing down to the bottom. Remember, working with clay is all about details, so I even turn over my pinch pot and smooth out the surface of the bottom. <laughs> 